Hey, it's Rich back with you for another video. I get a lot of questions uh, on the differences between an M2 and a Mustang or what I prefer. So today we're going to take a little time and get into the details of, of both of these airplanes. Okay, so we have, we have a Mustang and an M2 uh, in the hangar here. And this is a 2014 M2, that's a 2012 Mustang. The uh, Mustang was certified initially in 2006. They built about 480 of them until they stopped production. I think it was 2016. The M2 was certified in 2013. It's still in production and I think they built around 290. The times are similar, but just on a, from a price perspective, this airplane, it's not for sale, but it's probably in the 3.3, 3.4 range. That airplane is probably in the 2 million, 2 million, 1 range. So the price difference right there is a good example. It's maybe a million three, a million four, depending on the airplane. The differences in size of the airplane, this is a 10,700 pound gross weight. The Mustang has about an 8,700 pound gross weight. Seating, you have maximum six in the Mustang. You have up to eight in the M2 if you have the side facing seat. Uh, performance. You know, a, a 400 knots for the M2 and 330 knots for the Mustang. The engines are fully FADEC. They're made by different manufacturers, but they, they are essentially the same in terms of the way the pilot interacts with them. Williams on the M2, Pratt & Whitney's on the Mustang. Dimension-wise, the M2 is larger, so that equates to a little bit more in hangar costs versus the Mustang. Uh, I think you're probably looking at like 20% more in California to, to hangar an M2 than you do a Mustang. Capability-wise, these airplanes are very similar. They're full, you know, all-weather airplanes, and we're going to get more into the to the to the practical use of them uh, in a, a little bit later. So this is the M2 interior. Generally speaking, my impression is that it's it's a more open uh, feel than the than the Mustang. I think it's 35 cubic feet larger than the Mustang. Obviously, obviously it's longer this way, lengthwise, because you have the, uh, the potty back here and you have a side-facing seat up there. A big improvement in this airplane is the, is the lab. If you have a need for a lab, it's much more practical in the M2 than it is in the, uh, in the Mustang. And uh, these seats move, move in and out. It's a very comfortable cabin. Everybody that has M2s uh, likes them. And uh, it is larger than the Mustang. In the cockpit of the uh, M2 here with G3000 avionics, in the Mustang you have G1000. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, upgraded Mustangs with the NXI, but in my opinion uh, there's not a lot of capability difference in the G1000 NXI and the, and the G3000, so I kind of view that as a wash. Um, you might have a personal preference on G3000, but capability wise they're the same in my opinion. So let's go inside and take a closer look at some of the details. As far as maintenance on these two airplanes, we do a lot of maintenance on both uh, M2s and Mustangs. And you're going to pay a little bit more in, in ongoing maintenance costs, annual costs uh, on the M2, but I don't think it's going to be much more than 10 to 20 percent. Uh, I think we looked at some numbers on some of the airplanes that we're currently maintaining, and a Mustang was in the neighborhood of like $30,000 a year. Um, and if you add 10 to 20 percent, you're still under $40,000 a year on an M2, and I'd say that's pretty, pretty uh, reasonable and pretty accurate estimates of, of maintenance costs uh, for the airplanes, uh, depending. You're going to spend more some years and less, less other years. Engine programs uh, actually have gone up on the Mustang to where they're a little bit more expensive now than the M2, but you're looking in the neighborhood of $350 an hour. Uh, probably a little bit less for the for the M2, but remember the M2 Williams motors have 5,000 hour TBOs and 2,500 hour hot sections, and the Pratts on the Mustang have 1,750 on the hots and 3,500 on the overhauls. The other material difference in in program costs is the the uh, Williams programs cover corrosion, and the Pratt programs do not cover corrosion, and uh, Last is the insurance, and insurance advantage goes to the Mustang largely because of the lower hull value. And once you get above $3 million in hull value, 
uh, a transitioning jet uh, pilot with not a lot of jet time is going to is going to face a higher premium, less competition in that market because of the hull value going uh, above three million dollars. So you could save significantly, probably half uh, the cost for a Mustang insurance over over an M2. Of course, this depends on the hull value, and it also depends on your experience uh, with with jet. Uh, aircraft. Okay, so the best way that I thought to really uh, get into operating costs is to, to do a flight, what I consider a typical flight uh, in both of these airplanes. So Long Beach to Salt Lake City is, is uh, roughly 500 nautical miles. And uh, so I did, I did the same, and ForeFlight gave us the same route for both airplanes. And so when you look at that in the M2, uh, Today, which which equates to about a 28 knot headwind, it's an hour and 50 minutes of flight time, and you burn 1,550 pounds of fuel. The Mustang is two hours and 14 minutes, and it burns 1,330 pounds of fuel. So, uh, when you look at the savings on on these two trips. Um, it's it's insignificant in fuel cost because of the fat the, the M2 burns more fuel but it gets there faster and it's not it's not a significant fuel savings. I think we calculated it to be about $150 in savings on fuel in the Mustang. The Mustang will take 480 pound people and 100 pounds of baggage kind of as its maximum uh, uh, range where the M2 does that same payload and it has you could still go further. So that's an advantage the M2 has with that, you know, six people at 180 pounds and 100 pounds of baggage. You're kind of at a maximum range on the, on the Mustang at 500 nautical miles. It's hard to really give any major advantage to the M2 in terms of, um, you know, on a 500 nautical mile cross country as, it, you know, over the Mustang, because the Mustang will still do it. It gets there 20 minutes later. It burns a little less fuel, so I don't see a lot of customers that have a mission that, in a Mustang that they, they can't quite do, so they, buy, they have to have an M2 to make it. The average mission for these airplanes is essentially the same. In summary, uh, on these two airplanes, I mean, you have two great airplanes. They're, they're, they're probably the best in the class, in my opinion. You got a couple of competitors we didn't really talk about in the Honda Jet and the Phenom 100, but um, you can't go wrong either way. Uh, there's a couple of advantages, you know, uh, insurance costs are going to be higher for the same pilot on, a, on an M2, um, and acquisition costs are, are another big one, you know, you're, you're a million three to a million four more money for an M2, but I don't see any real advantage avionics wise, I don't think one airplane's easier to fly than the other, um, I don't really think you can go wrong either way, a lot of it may depend on, on an individual's or a company's budget just for the acquisition cost. So uh, anyway, I hope you got some value out of this. Uh, it's an airplane we deal, or both these airplanes we deal with a lot. If you have any questions about either one, we'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks for watching.